Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. Welcome to another weekly study. And today we want to talk about overactive and underactive muscles. It is probably the, um, the most requested uh, part of the materials within the NASM course that, that folks normally ask for explanation on. And not so much explanation as it is memorizing them in relation to the distortion uh, patterns that NASM speaks to. And there's three of them. So I just want to go over it again. I've seen in the Facebook group uh, quite a few people again asking. And remember something, when one person asks, it's interesting how all of a sudden all the replies come in, which lets us know that uh, once again, there's probably a lot of folks that are having trouble, not just memorizing the material, because look, in the end, all you've got to do is read it and rewrite it over and over and over, and you'll memorize the, the names of the muscles with those particular distortion patterns. And that's kind of the idea. And that's why I wanted to go over, over with you uh, today. Again, just kind of assistance to help memorize so you can, um, so you can pass or at least answer the questions and pass the exam. Do keep in mind that any type of material that that we cover here, this can be used every in every other chapter of the book, for the most part. The whole concept of read, write, recite to memorize material, obviously it's not just uh, specific to chapter 12, postural movement, but every other chapter. But specifically now, let's talk a little bit about overactive and underactive muscles. First, and by the way, it's chapter 12 in the seventh edition. Very interesting, by the way, because I, I brought along the... Um, their previous, NASM's previous sixth edition, which was significantly more challenging, I would say, to memorize or to at least get into the overactive, underactive materials. I want to make this simple for you because I want you to understand the whole concept of overactive and underactive muscles and what you really need to know, probably what you don't need to know, by the way. And when you're in chapter 12, all you have to remember from an overactive, underactive muscle perspective are the three distortion syndromes, okay? Now, just keep that in mind. And that, that's actually on page 386 in your seventh edition book. So here's what I want you to do. Before you do anything else, take out your textbook, right? If you're studying the materials and you're looking at this, take out your textbook and use the textbook. But also remember, you got to have a pad, something to write on. Okay, if you want to use your colored, colored markers as well, anything, if you want to draw, that's great too. Anything that gets your brain engaged and helps you from a study perspective. Uh, but just keep in mind, you do have to rewrite what you read. Remember, I've said it a thousand, time, a thousand times if I said it once, reading is not studying unless you are 0.01% of the population where you have a photographic memory and you can read it and then regurgitate it on a test. No, if you're not like that, you're like pretty much everybody else. Um, you have to read it. That's the start of studying, but then you've got to rewrite it. You've got to engage the material in a way that brings in other learning style concepts. And so the read, write, recite method that I use seems to work for the vast majority of people. So what I do is uh, break open the book. And if your goal right now, if your goal is to just memorize the muscles, that's a piece of cake. Here's what you do. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, just let you know, by the way, on page 442 in chapter 14, you're going to see a very similar, um, a very similar concept here when it talks about altered reciprocal inhibition. That's where they also talk about the overactive and underactive muscles because altered reciprocal, and just so you know, it's about neural drive impulses. And it, for the most part, if a muscle is receiving a higher than normal neurological or neural drive impulses, they become overactive, they shorten. By the way, while I'm saying that, uh, they actually have that as their definition on page 383. Look, by the way, there's kind of nice of NASM to do this for you. They basically gave you all the definitions, overactive, pest planus, muscle imbalance. But your goal right now is to go to page 386 and look at tables 12, one, two, and three. You've got three distortion patterns, three distortion syndromes. 
And um, NASM has given you static positions, tells you what joints are involved with this, and then your potential muscle imbalances, either overactive, underactive. Here's what you do. For those of you that are struggling with this and you're just trying to memorize the muscles, which is not a bad idea, piece of paper and your pen, simply write pes planus. Now, the way I do it is because I'm going to use this one sheet for each distortion uh, syndrome, one sheet for that, one sheet for the lower cross, one sheet for the upper cross, pes planus, and I'm simply going to write over and under. Remember, overactive and underactive muscles have no relevance except within these distortion syndromes, right? If your biceps are overactive compared to your tricep, as far as I know, there's no distortion syndrome that goes along with that. But there is a distortion syndrome, right, that is a problem at your LPHC, your lumbar pelvic hip complex, Okay, there are problems with your shoulder girdle area, right? There are problems at the ankle. And by the way, by the way, pes planus is, they used to call it pronation distortion syndrome. And you, you would see that in their sixth edition. But the foot and ankle, man, that's a, that's a hot mess for some people. Um, and by the way, it's issues at the feet that go upward and cause problems at the knee. And that's where we see the knee valgus and this turning in and adduction. But I don't want to get off track. Just memorize the muscles, piece of cake. Overactive and underactive. Overactive, and I'm just do what I'm doing. Take out your textbook, take a piece of paper, grab a pen, and just do what I'm doing. You can even put the video on pause. Just do this. Over, gastroc, gastroc, and soleus, soleus. And I'm going to do that. Adductor complex, hip flexors, okay, muscles near front of, okay, potential underactive, anterior, posterior, tibialis, the so shin muscles, gluteus maximus, and medius, butt muscles, okay, great, and I just wrote that down, uh, guess what I do now, do it again, over and under, rewrite it, gastroxoleus, do it again, now, did you memorize it? Short term, you should have, because guess what you're going to do? Go to the back of your sheet. Go to the back of your sheet and don't look. And now do it from memorization. Gastroc, right? Overactive. Gastroc, adductors. You get the idea? Underactive. What were they? Tibialis anterior, tibialis posterior. Gluteus maximus. You've you've just memorized the overactive and underactive muscles. Do it again tomorrow. Write the same thing down. I guarantee you, if you do that, you will have memorized the over and active muscles for the pes planus distortion syndrome. If you do it once, read it, and then don't do it again for three to four days, you've missed out on the most powerful, the most powerful memorization tool, which is repetition. Do that for a couple of days, I guarantee you, you won't be able to not remember it, okay? And then what I do after I've done that over and over a couple of times, I would do that for all three of these distortion syndromes. Look, your brain can memorize it. Trust me, your brain can memorize a lot of material. You just got to teach it how to do that. And this is going to be the best way. Once I'm done with it, throw that up, throw it in the trash. And guess what I do again? That's right, the same thing. Pes planus or upper cross, lower cross. Um, it's just not a really exciting, sexy way to study, but it's effective. So if you're um, if you're struggling with trying to memorize the overactive and underactive muscles, that's how you do it. It's like memorizing anything else. The material in chapter twelve is the same in from a memorization perspective, the same as the material in all these other chapters. And that's how you would memorize in the other chapters. Okay, look, that's the memorization. The other part of this is to understand how overactive and underactive muscles um, fit into the distortion syndrome, the distortion syndromes themselves, and what that actually means when you're training people. 
Okay, now what you can do is under, you can understand now, I hope that when you move into, that's a static assessment. That's what you three, that's what you see. Now what NASM wants you to do is to move into the overhead squat assessment. Now guess what? Because of the dynamic assessment, that's what you can now spend a little bit more time on. Remember, all I'm doing today with you is helping you from what folks have said, they just want to memorize the muscles, the overactive and underactive muscles. Um, for sure, we can, we can do an additional uh, video on moving into the dynamic assessment. By the way, we have uh, videos already, already on this. Please do me a favor. If you have other questions related to this, now remember, I just went over with you memorizing those muscles. Piece of cake. If you go over to page 442, you're going to notice the same picture, figure 14.4, as figure, figure 12.1. It's the same picture. Well, it's because the material is related. The only difference here is that we're talking about overactive agonist muscles. The assumption in chapter 14 is that you got chapter 12, right? You understood what overactive was. That allows you to understand altered reciprocal inhibition. As I said before, your main focus right now is to understand these three distortion syndromes, <coughs> excuse me, memorize those muscles that are in tables 12, 1, 12, 2, 12, 3, and uh, you should be good to go. If you have any questions, because remember, if you have any questions on the material, um, we want to help you to pass the NASM exam on the first attempt. If you've taken it and you failed, and obviously it's your second attempt, well, then the goal is to um, help you study, help you do the things that you didn't do the first time around, okay? So that on the second time around, you are fully prepared. Um, if you have any questions on memorizing material or specifically memorizing the overactive, underactive muscles, or you want to go more in depth, you got to give me a specific question. Uh, give me something very specific and we'll dive into that. If you have any comments, uh, you can definitely make them, uh, make them directly below this video. Uh, we have a lot of content that you can also um, uh, reach out and look at, subscribe to the YouTube channel itself. Uh, you can click on notifications and get uh, more and get more information on when the videos actually come out. Remember, we want to help you pass on the first attempt or second or third, wherever you are at. We are here to serve you at Body Design University and help you to become successful after you pass the NASM um, test itself to become successful personal trainers in the fitness industry. As always, it's a pleasure um, and have a great weekend. See you next week. Bye.